Um, my name is Latrizia. I'm 15. Hi, I'm Erin Howard. Hi, my name is T.W. and I'll... Hi, my name is Sophia. I'm 16. Hi, I'm Kai Zena. I'm a Muslim Palestinian American. I'm 16 years old. This year as a non-voter, I found it very displeasing that the number two runner-ups for president-elect consisted of two racist, xenophobic, misogynistic, Islamophobic, Zionist, old white men. That being said, I'd vote for Joe Biden. But if I lived in a non-predominantly democratic state, I'd vote for the Socialist Workers Party purely because I think it's a very good way to protest this disgusting two-party system that America has just normalized for some reason because it's really easy to capitalize off it. Although I would vote for Joe Biden because he is the lesser of the two evils in that sense. I also find it really painful to watch other non-voters advocate for blatant racism and conservative ideas on the basis that they saw it on the media from like, for example, Fox News, or they heard it at a family dinner. And that, that's the only basis that they have. I, as a as a citizen, did the bare minimum to educate myself, make my own opinion using evidence and logic, and human decency, of course, before I entered a discussion or argument with another human being, because I think that's just the bare minimum to do. I hope I'm able to contribute effectively to society, even if that means you settle for Joe Biden. Like For the Democratic nominees, I would have voted for Bernie Sanders. Um, I agree, definitely because I agree with so many of his um, ideas like his tax plan and um, his plan for legalization of some specific drugs. Um, but um, in the end, I of course would have voted for Biden. One, because he is not as openly racist, he is not openly racist and openly xenophobic openly islamophobic openly misogynistic as donald trump while he does have a lot of things about him that i do not like about him it's it's a lot like um everybody's saying the best of two evils and biden is definitely the best of both of the evils that we got a choice of this year how i felt as a non-voter was really stressed out and worried because i didn't know what was going to happen um, and I wanted Joe Biden to win. I wanted Trump out of office and it was a close thing. Watching the elections was scary and I didn't know what was gonna happen. So I felt really stressed, but I really appreciate all the people who did vote because it's really important for you to vote. And if you can, like the second you turn 18, you have to register to vote, pre-register to vote. I mean, those are things you can do for your country to make that difference that you want to see. And voting is really important. It's your civic duty. So vote, vote, vote. <laughs> um, and then what was not being able to vote like for you? Again, it was just really stressful and worrying. I want to be able to make that difference. And I know as soon as I can, I will be voting. So in 2016, I was 12 years old and living in a very conservative part of Illinois. And so, you know, I think that hearing about how so many people's parents were voting for Donald Trump did have a small impact on me. I mean, I was just like, what? But at the same time, it just kind of brushed it off because I didn't know how impactful his presidency was going to be for a lot of people and for me and my family. Um, but in 2018, which was when I moved to Seattle, I saw so many, like even my friends, they were so involved with these different political issues and topics, which really encouraged me to get involved and use my voice. And following in 2020, because of the election, I have really pushed myself to encourage others to vote, encourage others to spread awareness and use their voice after, you know, moving to Seattle and having myself get encouraged by a lot of these people, I decided that I wanted to help others and just spread awareness and um, 
stay politically involved and educate myself. I picked up a couple of books and I started listening to a lot of like panel discussions and I, um, yeah, I just tried to stay as involved as possible and I still try to do that. In terms of how this election has changed me and um, my actions in the future, this election essentially reinforced why I really hate capitalist politics and made me really frustrated that I wasn't able to participate because I'm too young to vote. Um, it also like highlighted in real time the absence of democracy in the United States um, and how that affects people individually and on a community level. Um, and it impacted my perspective on politics and social issues by making it clear to me that the system that we have in place today is not one that's going to allow change and um, we have to fight for it beyond a vote to get what we want to see to happen. Um, and I'm super excited for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to be in office, but at the same time, I'm setting such high expectations for them because we have really, I think that a lot of people have worked so hard to get them in office because they want to see their voice in office. They want to see Joe Biden and Kamala Harris supporting um, just the people of the U.S. So I'm super excited, but I'm ready for change and I'm ready for them to, um, you know, progress and help the U.S. I'm expecting a lot from this administration in the sense that there's a lot of things that need to be done for people to start feeling safe and protected again. For example, I expect the Joe Biden administration to create steady police reform, steady gun control, free housing, free health care, protection of the LGBTQ plus rights because their community is being actively discriminated against and advocated against. And most importantly, especially right now, very strict COVID-19 restrictions because the last administration did a very poor job and it caused 200,000 American lives. And that's just tragic. It's, it's just very sad. Although those are things that I expect, I do have hopes and dreams that this administration does other things, but I know they won't because they constantly show that they're against what I'm asking for. But maybe hope, like these are hopes, they're dreams, you know? I hope that this administration creates steady sanctioned peace in the middle east i hope they change the capital of my homeland back to jerusalem the way it's supposed to be and create active and very strict consequences to israel for breaking international law by annexing palestine even during a pandemic and that they have been for the past 80 years i expect i don't i don't expect i wish that this administration can create a safe and easy immigration status system so that people then refugees seeking asylum from their homelands can make it here safely and productively. I hope that the government reallocates funds to low income minority communities that, that are being actively and disproportionately affected every day and get them out of poverty. Uh, maybe to give them better schooling, better houses, better utilities better everything because it is horrible the living environment that they are in every single day um i hope and dream that maybe they, they can create a better prison system and abolish this private sector used for capitalizing off of free labor and return a lot of rights to victims of the prison system although kamala harris is purely against that and advocates for anti-prison reform because that's just the person she is I just hope that this administration does what is right for the minorities and the people of this country that are actively being affected and discriminated against by this system. And most importantly, I hope that this administration rep gives proper reparations to the indigenous people of this land because this is their land rightfully. If I'm going to be a Palestinian American and advocate for my land back, I'm advocating for theirs. They deserve this land back. It is their land. They are, in, they are the native people to this place and we deserve, they deserve proper reparations for the genocide of their people and the act of discrimination that everyone in this government has been actively pursuing to get rid of their rights and get rid of their land and get rid of their name and the lease for this property that is the United States of America. Um, to answer what I want from this upcoming administration, I would like to see Biden's team respond much more harshly to the um, COVID-19 pandemic that we're facing still. Um, I want there to be um, a federal response as opposed to individual states and counties having to figure out what, on their own how to deal with it. 
Um, I also want there to be um, meaningful climate politics like the Green New Deal um, because I want the United States to actually take responsibility and help fix the problems that we are causing on a global climate scale. Um, and I would like that conversation also to be intersectional. Um, free public college is also super important to me. I um, think that we have to have um, higher education more accessible to people, especially minorities, um, so that there's opportunity for everyone um, beyond high school. Um, I also want to see the abolishment of the police and prison industrial complex, and I want there to be drastic changes made to the criminal justice system to make it more humanizing. Um, these things aren't necessarily going to happen just because we have somebody new in office, but I would like to be optimistic and think that this next administration would be more willing to listen to um, us as a national community. Um, next administration, I'm really hoping, he said Biden said on his first day he would actually get rid of the um, Muslim ban. As, I, as you can see, I am Muslim and I know a lot of people that are close to me that were affected by this ban. Um, and he said he was going to get rid of that on his first day. And I really hope that does happen. Another thing is I want to see some... I want to see us put back into some global... Into some global warming action groups. So that we can handle this situation a lot better than Trump had us handling this situation. Um, this this election has definitely changed me. I think that it was it's definitely the first election that I was involved in trying to register people to vote, trying to get people educated, you know. And that's probably just because I'm a teenager and last election I was like still very much a very small child. Um, I honestly though don't think it's too fair that especially our generation have to um, in a sense grow up so early like i do think it's good that we're involved around the things about involved in the things around us but like our parents and our grandparents they were not thinking about politics at 13 14 15 16 17 um even 25 um and i think it's really unfair that we had to grow up so early but i do think it is great that they the the population is being able to hear a younger generation of voices and being able to hear how we think and our perspectives so they can get prepared for the future. Um, and I do really think that it's great, on another hand, that we are getting involved so early because usually the young people are able to go out there and do stuff like a lot more than older generations are able to, but they did when they were children. Um, and they really started in like their 20s or their 30s, like going out and protesting. But there's like children now who want to go out and protest. Um, um, and I think that is really great. Um, but I also think, like I said before, that it's not fair because we were kind of forced into this because of how drastic and how horrible this country is being run right now. Like how we have been forced to see all of the things that are affecting us negatively in our everyday life and are affecting the people around us negatively in their everyday lives and how we have to seriously change it like as soon as we can. I want them to work on our education system because I think that there are a lot of problems with it, including things like the school to prison pipeline or the rising depression in teens, like the grade system. There's a lot of things that could be worked on. Like, I know that this is really, this is really specific to me and people in Washington and Seattle, but Garfield, um, Garfield High School, their science program is not funded by the school. It's funded by parents. And that is, that's not okay. That if, <laughs> I mean, we should be able to have science without, having parents have to pay for it. And so, yeah, that sucks. And we need to have a better education system. Um, number two is climate change. I don't think that any of the other things can happen if we can't be here on this earth. We need to have a healthy and happy earth because if we don't, then we don't get to live on it and we don't get to live at all. And so that's like the most important thing to me. I think that education and climate change are the most important things to me.